So Thanksgiving just passed and Chloe and I got together with our friend April, who's an amazing baker, to create a tutorial on food styling. April was making us a chocolate pumpkin tart that promised to be pretty photogenic. And inside her tiny sunlit kitchen, we created a farmhouse inspired styled shoot to really see what goes into creating beautiful food photography. Straight off the bat, we realized how much work it was to create an aesthetic space in a real, living, working kitchen. The kind of kitchen that all of us living in smaller spaces in the city have. We brought a coffee table into a sunny corner and covered it with a tablecloth, and then began laying out props. I don't know why though, why would you tie cinnamon sticks? So they don't get lonely. Looking at reference photos, we realized creating a perfectly imperfect aesthetic mess around the food was crucial, so we went about collecting a ton of random stuff. I think it's a dead grass, and we're gonna put it near the food we're gonna eat. We spilled coffee beans, poured cocoa, cut leaves and grass, and spent way too much time trying to curate a messy yet polished vibe. It felt a little silly, but the effort was starting to pay off. This took so long. It took like 30 or 40 minutes of like scrounging in the yard, uh, scrounging through April's cabinets for like kitschy aesthetic <laughs> silverware. While we complained, April did the actual baking. It's amazing how much you don't see in food photography. While there are parts that are easy to capture beautifully, there are also parts of the process that aren't the prettiest but made the experience memorable. For example, we had no idea where to find maple leaf stencils for the decoration, and we didn't even have any cardstock, so I actually drew and cut out leaves out of a nearby box of crackers. Finally, it was finished. Here are some of the practical tips we learned as we shot the photos. Avoid capturing the edges of your table to make it seem like your image is a small part of a bigger scene. Try to frame out most of the props to keep the focus on your subject. Experiment with angles and details. Keep an eye on where the light works to highlight your subject in the best way. And don't overfill or underfill the frame. Our favorite photos were full of visual interest but kept at least one corner of the frame empty. This is usually where I'd end the video, but I wanted to mention something else I learned in the process. Taking the time to create this shows me how much work it is to make those aspirational Instagram photos, and it's definitely an art form. But when you're in your tiny kitchen, struggling to make something look nice and taste good, and laughing along with your loved ones, you're creating something special too. These photos, the props, all the junk we collected and laid out aesthetically to try and capture something we saw on the internet, it was fun, but at the end of the day, the time we spent together meant more than anything else. Remember that this holiday season. Use your art to bring people together, rather than bringing people together to use for your art. You'll love what you create all the more for it. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in two weeks with another tutorial. Can women have it all, ladies and gentlemen? Only if there's several of them. <laughs> Which is what? <laughs> women should wear pants. I'm not. Can a woman fly a plane? <laughs>